Welcome to everyone who is here this evening. We will try to cover what are known best practices for CT radiation safety, tips for minimizing patient exposure, pediatric dose concerns, and inherent scanner features that will help us with radiation protection. After completing this module, you all should be able to identify the types of ionizing radiation that's present, describe protection practices that are specific to each facility under consideration, discuss radiation dose in computed tomography, list factors influencing radiation dose in CT, and describe dose reduction methods during CT procedures. Radiation dose should be one of the main technologist concerns. For this reason, we will explain what factors affect the patient dose and how the technologist can change in the acquisition parameters to help reduce the patient dose. First of all, the dose distribution inside the patient is completely different than that for a conventional radiograph, where in conventional radiography, the dose decreases continuously from the entrance of the X-ray beam to its exit with a ratio of between 100 to 1,000 to one. In the case of CT though, as a consequence of the scanning procedure that equally irradiates the patient from all directions, the dose is almost equally distributed in the scanning plane. If we want to list the concerns that are related to patient dose in CT, we can talk here about skin dose and dose distribution. The dose at the edge of the CT scan beam does not decrease to zero immediately. And the skin dose for succession of adjacent scans is greater than the skin dose for single scans along with overlap from previous and subsequent scans. There are many factors that influence the radiation dose in CT. The radiation dose in CT scanning depends on the energy of the beam, the beam collimation, the MAS value, filtration, the scan pitch, iterative reconstruction, and lead shielding. As with radiography, the energy of the beam controls penetrability and scattered production. Of course, in CT, the KVP is usually kept in the range of 120 to 130. Two sets of collimators are generally used. One is positioned in front of the primary beam or prepatient. The other is positioned in front of the detector array or postpatient. The MAS is varied in order to perform each scan. More MAS is used to scan larger volumes of tissue or compensate for thinner scan slices or tight collimation. Because CT is a computer-assisted technology, the effects of changes in MAS do not appear the same way as with conventional radiography. Instead, optimization in signal-to-noise ratio is sought. There are two purposes to filtration, skin dose reduction and reduction in certain kinds of artifacts that result from the effects of what's known as beam hardening. The pitch is the way in which the continuous spiral of the scan is stretched out or compressed. It is defined as the ratio of the scan table increment 
otherwise known as BI or bed index. Her 360 degrees of X-ray tube rotation to the, th the slice thickness or SW slice width. When pitch ratio is higher, patient dose is reduced. Let me say that again. When the pitch ratio is higher, the patient dose is reduced. Iterative reconstruction can be used to reduce dose levels while maintaining acceptable noise levels. Iterative reconstruction refers to iterative algorithms that are used to reconstruct 2D and 3D images in certain imaging techniques. For example, in computed tomography, an image must be reconstructed from projections of an object. Generally, shielding is not utilized in CT because the beam is so tightly collimated to the slice thickness. In this slide, we are looking at the system factors and the technologist controlled factors that affect the patient dose. Let's talk about system factors affecting the patient dose. First of all, there's short geometry. Increases the concentration of photons per unit area. It also increases patient dose. An advantage of this short geometry though is the reduction of noise. The long geometry, where the source to skin distance is longer, results in less patient exposure. Due to the inverse square law though, the intensity of radiation varies inversely with the square of the distance from the source. We learned this in our radiography programs. The filters, which are added material that increases the effective X-ray energy by absorbing low energy X-rays. These are designed to reduce patient dose. And finally, the collimators the restriction of the useful X-ray beam to the anatomical area of interest is what collimators do. Their main purpose is to reduce patient dose and improve image quality. Then there are the technologist controlled factors. The applied MAS value which is defined by the product of exposure time and X-ray tube current. It determines the quantity of photons reaching the detectors. Increasing in MAS improves image quality by reducing noise, but increases the patient dose. Just like in conventional radiography, an increase in MAS will increase the patient dose. The KVP value, which is the qualitative measure of the X-ray beam, it increase, an increase in the KVP produces an increase in the photon energy. Typically 120 KVP is used in CT. It is important to note that when increasing KVP by 15% and reducing the mass by a half, this will reduce the patient dose, but it will also increase image noise. The pitch ratio is used in helical or spiral CT. It is the ratio of the distance the table travels per revolution of the X-ray tube by the slice thickness. A lower pitch ratio or one-to-one -one, means radiation exposure is comparable to conventional CT. Higher pitch ratio or two-to-one means the dose is lower 
than conventional CT. Image by multi-slice computed tomography or capitals MSCT contributes to a more efficient utilization of the entire slice and dose and is actually unchanged or slightly lower. And the tube current modulation, which regulates the pulse of current through different body tissues. It reduces overall radiation dose to the patient and allows sufficient photons to pass through the widest parts of the patient without unnecessary dose to the narrower parts. Tube current modulation is a feature of modern CT scanners to alter the strength of the beam by modulating the current of the X-ray tube depending on the signal to noise ratio. The purpose of tube current modulation is to maintain a near constant signal to noise ratio in the image across different areas of the body with varying thicknesses in order to avoid excessive radiation doses while maintaining image quality. It is similar to automatic exposure control used in CR and DR radiography. There are many other factors which should be taken into consideration when talking about dose, such as leakage from the x-ray tube, Thus, the scanner should be checked and maintained regularly to detect any damage. Checking the detector efficiency makes better use of the radiation that is passing through the patient and is helpful in reducing image noise. Repeated scanning due to improper choice in protocol or technical factors. And finally, preparing the patient for the study that decreases skepticism and increases cooperation. The potential risk associated with radiation is generally measured using three different magnitudes, the absorbed dose, the effective dose, and the delivered dose. In all cases, these values are influenced by the radiation flow rate and the energy of the radiation. We know that exposure rate is the exposure produced per unit of time. The Systems International, or SI unit, of exposure rate is the coulomb per kilogram. In conventional units, it is measured in milliroentgen per second or rentgen per hour. We also know that the absorbed dose is defined as the amount of energy deposited by ionizing radiation in a substance. Absorbed dose is given the symbol D. The absorbed dose is usually measured in a unit called the gray, which is derived from the system's international units, or the rad in the conventional system. A millisievert is how scientists measure radiation in what we call the effective dose. Radiation is absorbed differentially by different parts of the body. The millisievert is used to measure the amount of radiation absorbed over the entire body. The fundamental radiation dose measurement in computed tomography is the CT dose index or capitals CTDI, 
which is the dose within the primary beam. From this, the dose length product or DLP is calculated, which estimates the total dose delivered over a specific scan length. The average American has a yearly radiation dose of 6.2 millisieverts, evenly divided between natural and man-made sources, which can include medical scans like x-rays or CT scans. If you don't undergo any medical imaging tests, your dose is around three millisieverts per year. The volume CTDI is determined from the CT acquisition parameters, which are KV, MAS, and pitch. When we double the MAS, we will increase the volume CTDI by double. 100 MAS can equal 100 MA times one second. We all learned this again in our radiography program. Either doubling the acquisition parameters by doubling the MA or by doubling the acquisition time will give us 200 MAS and this will improve the image quality. The total distance from the x-ray tube to the detector is fixed by the manufacturer, 110 centimeters in long geometry and 90 centimeters in short geometry. It requires higher MA value in long geometry since remember, the dose is inversely proportional to the square of the tube detector distance. Future CT generations are designed with short tube detector distances to reduce the patient radiation dose. Scanners can collimate the x-ray beam to distribute the information on a wider or narrower range. The amount of information collected by a narrow acquisition is better. The resulting reconstructions are thinner, so there is an increase in spatial resolution. However, this increases the local radiation due to the more concentrated X-ray distribution. The scan field of view, or capitals SFOV, is the area being scanned. This selectable scan factor is measured from the CT system isocenter to the most distant located edge of the patient. The display field of view or capitals DFOV, determines how much of the scan field of view is reconstructed into an image. The display field of view can be less than or equal to the scan field of view, but cannot be more than the scan field of view. When we talk about dose optimization, understanding CT dose parameters, including tube potential, tube current, pitch, CT dose index, dose length product, and effective dose is a prerequisite. Therefore, in this section, we will cover the different measurement parameters that are used in computed tomography. One term to describe the accumulated dose is the multiple scan average dose or capitals MSAD, which as its name implies, is the dose 
from a multiple scan examination. It is averaged over one scan interval in the central portion of the multiple scan dose profile. The multiple scan average dose represents the average dose received during an examination. It is the first CT dose descriptor to be identified. To determine the average dose, a series of scans are performed and between each scan, the patient is moved a bed index or BI. The dose from all scans are then summed together to form the total patient dose. Remember the bed index is the same as the slice thickness. The fundamental radiation dose parameters in CT is the computed tomography dose index or CTDI. It is used to quantitate patient exposure. It measures the radiation dose at the intended slice thickness, as well as that from penumbra. CTDI is measured by the manufacturer and checked by the on-site physicist using an ionization chamber, which we should all be familiar with. Because the ionization chamber measures the exposure and not the dose, we convert Rankins to milligrays. The volume CTDI, which is a derivative of the CTDI, can be used to express the average dose delivered to the scan volume for a specific examination. DLP or dose length product is the volume CTDI multiplied by the scan length in centimeters and is given in units of milligray per centimeter. Another important parameter is the effective dose, which is useful in assessing and comparing the potential biological risk of a specific examination. CT technologists are required to optimize parameters and obtain data required for the diagnosis by using the lowest possible irradiation. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to obtain the precise value of doses delivered, and we are forced to only use estimations, orders of magnitude doses that, if absolutely necessary, can be compared to values of the average natural radiation. Irradiation can nevertheless be evaluated by using the delivered dose, which is the KVP, the MA and MAS, the absorbed dose, and the effective dose. So what are any disadvantages? First of all, it does not provide a good estimation of the dose received since it does not consider beam geometry and collimation. But a real advantage is that we can now see the parameters that can be changed to reduce current, which is the MA, and kilovolt, which is the KV. The effective dose is used to measure ionizing radiation in terms of the potential for causing harm or long-term effects in the future. The sievert is the unit of effective dose that takes into account the type of radiation as well as the sensitivity of tissues and organs. It is a way to measure ionizing radiation in terms of the potential for causing harm. The sievert is a very large unit 
So it is practical to use smaller units such as the millisieverts or microsieverts. There are 1,000 microsieverts in one millisievert and 1,000 millisieverts in one sievert. In addition to the amount of radiation or dose, it is often useful to express the rate at which the dose is delivered, known as the dose rate, such as microsieverts per hour or mini millisieverts per year. Different body parts have different sensitivities to radiation. Again, we learned this in our radiography programs under biological effects. For example, the head is less sensitive than the chest. Effective dose relates to the overall long-term risk to a person from a procedure and is useful in comparing risks from different procedures. Effective dose is not intended to apply to a specific patient. The actual risk to a patient might be higher or lower, depending on the size of the patient and the type of procedure. The effective dose reflects the non-uniform radiation absorption of partial body exposures which are relative to a whole body radiation dose and allows comparisons of risk among different CT examination protocols. The SI units of measure is the sieverts or millisieverts. The conventional unit is the REM or millirem. Let's look at an example of a calculation of effective dose. If the following organs of a patient were exposed to a dose, say the lung at 100 millisieverts, the chest or the liver at 70 millisieverts, and cortical bone at 300 millisieverts, then the total effective dose, which is calculated using the factors of ionization in tissue, is 100 for the lungs times 0.12, 70 for the liver times 0.04, and 300 for cortical bone times 0.01 when we use the factors of irradiation on the chart from the previous page. And when we add those together, we have 12 plus 2.8 plus 6 millisieverts or 17.8 millisieverts. The dose length product is an indicator of the integrated radiation dose of an entire CT examination. The DLP incorporates the number of scans and the scan width. It provides the measurement for the total amount of exposure for a series of scans and is derived from the product of the CT dose index for a volume of tissue and the length of the scan. DLP is corrected by a factor that is comprised of the beam quality and averaged with organ weighted factors. A reasonable approximation of the effective dose can be obtained using the equation E for effective dose equals capital K, which stands for conversion factor, times dose length product. The K values or conversion factors have been published for the head, neck, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. The mean effective dose in a chest X-ray is 50 times lower than a cranial scan and 100 times lower than a chest CT scan. Let's compare doses against diagnostic exams. The majority of standard radiological examinations are less than one 
millisievert. While for a CT scan, it is between one and 10 millisieverts. It is important to keep in mind that a chest X-ray represents seven days of natural exposure and that a chest CT represents 2.4 years of natural exposure. So this concludes the end of section one. Let's start to look into some of the details now and define the factors image that affect patient dose. Our topics in this section are flat filters, patient centering, morphology of the patient, auto MA, benefits of dose modulation, and the difference between single slice and multi-slice CT. CT scanners have x-ray filters that shape both the geometry and the spectrum of the beam. Standard filters are usually made up of aluminum, like a radiographic tube filter, but the design in the filter has some important differences. When we talk about CT filters, we note that they are generally thicker than radiographic filters. They often combine the aluminum with materials such as Teflon or copper. Flat filters attenuate low energy x-rays, which increase the patient dose without adding to image production. This thin metal blade provides a narrow radiation spectrum, which is close to monochromatic. Compensating filters, which are used in CT, are often called bow tie filters due to their shape. These filters are thinnest in the middle where the central ray of the beam is and becomes thicker towards the edges of the fan beam. This filter can partially compensate for the patient's body thickness contour. The result is that for any line which is across the field of view, the total attenuation and beam hardening along the path of the x-ray becomes more uniform than if the beam only passes through the patient. When compensating for the attenuation differences, it allows the scanner to operate with a smaller dynamic range of detectors. Compensating for the beam hardening will also improve the scanner's qualitative accuracy in representing tissue attenuation as CT number values or Hounsfield units. A scanner will have at least two different bow tie filters to provide compensation for head and body scans. Sometimes scanners can have as many as five or six filters, allowing them to match a variety of patient sizes. The filters are selected by the scanner and automatically switched into the beam path based on the scan setup chosen by the technologist. Another important factor is patient centering. Miscentering occurs frequently in the clinic and has a significant effect of the dose of the patient. A patient centering system, or capitals PSC, has been shown to reduce the effects of patient miscentering and maintaining optimal imaging conditions. When a patient is placed on a CT table, one should attempt to position them in the center using the gantry mounted laser system. This means aligning the midline of the patient with the central laser 
while changing the table height until the center of the mass of the anatomy that is being scanned is in the center of the gantry. Verifying the center of the patient coincides with the center of the CT gantry is a significant part of dose reduction strategies that are under the control of the technologist operating the scanner. A one centimeter table shift results in an organ dose difference of up to 8%, while a four centimeter shift can result in a organ dose differences of up to 35%. Miscentering of two centimeters can produce as much as a 25% unnecessary increase of radiation dosage to the patient. In medicine, morphology refers to the shape, size, and structure rather than the function of a given organ. When we talk about the same acquisition parameters for a scan, the dose values are inversely proportional to the patient size. This explains why the equivalent doses, which are based on the absorbed doses to a specific organ, if adjusted to account for the effectiveness of the type of radiation are much more harmful in pediatric patients than in adults. This scout view demonstrates an automatic dose response based on the patient's anatomy. We know the human body is not cylindrical. Its contours and tissue densities must be taken into account. When we use automatic correction, it adjusts the dose as a function of the patient's size and the anterior to posterior and lateral directions. Variation is a three-step process and virtually all manufacturers use their own system for the automated, automated variation of MA as a function of a patient's size. The steps are as follows. Determine the overall patient size. The same dose in MA is used for the entire examination, but distributed according to the morphology type. B, the Z axis is a suitable dose and is delivered within each tube rotation, and C, the X and Y axes where the tube modulation dose at each rotation as a function of patient dissymmetry or lack of symmetry in the axial plane. So let's talk a little bit about single slice and multi-slice acquisitions and their differences. If we compare a single slide acquisition to a multiple slide computed tomography, we can deduce the following. The entire beam, including the penumbra, is used to create the image in a single slice CT. However, in multiple slice CT, if the penumbra is used, the peripheral detectors would receive a beam of lower intensity than the central detectors. This is avoided by increasing the beam's collimation. This allows the penumbra to reach beyond the active detectors that are all uniformly exposed. So in our last section, we have talked about many factors involved in CT that contribute to patient dose. In this last section, we will be discussing some recommendations on how we can reduce patient dose, 
and what we should take into account when we scan a patient. Not only will we review radiation principles, but we will discuss how to protect the technologist and any pregnant staff. And before we conclude this section, we will discuss some CT dose reduction methods to use in pediatric scanning. There are a number of recommendations that can be done to help reduce the patient occupational, the patient and occupational radiation dose. As the technologist, you should follow these for maximum radiation protection for all. Restrict the scan volume to the necessary anatomy, reduce the number of acquisitions to the max, Make sure to use the appropriate dose reduction software, which can give you a 10 to 50% reduction. In the spiral mode, use a pitch greater than one, use the appropriate MA value, and when scanning children, use low radiation doses. And finally, Make sure to protect the radiosensitive organs, such as the thyroid and breasts, as well as the crystalline, which are any structures of atoms, molecules, and ions that bond together in a three-dimensional ordered arrangement. Manufacturers have an obligation to ensure certain parameters. These include a high performance dose reduction software that is available. Using a high accuracy of a system displayed radiation dose and ensuring that the iterative reconstruction algorithms are available to improve the signal to noise ratio and the image quality. And lastly, developing pediatric CT scanning protocols. Radiologists have an important role in assisting with radiation protection to the patient and the staff, starting with justifying the need to realize a specific examination. They should decide if a non-radiation imaging modality would be an acceptable replacement, such as an MRI or an ultrasound. Limiting the area to be scanned and not repeating the exam unnecessarily should be considered always. If they are using an exam for research purposes, they need to be able to justify it. A good working relationship with the technologist helps ensure that all appropriate techniques are being used to protect the patient. Every patient receives a dose of radiation from each series. It is an entirety, which means whole or complete. We need to remember to segment each series according to the diagnostic priorities. All radiographers should stick to the ALARA guidelines, including CT technologists. It is their responsibility to make sure that the best quality scan is obtained using the lowest effective dose. A good CT quality assurance program should be established and it should be followed. Always remember the three cardinal principles that we learned in our radiography programs, time, distance, and shielding. When we talk about time, remember to minimize the time the patient is exposed to the CT beam. Our best means of achieving this goal 
is to do the following things. Double check the patient's identification as well as the requisition. Make sure the patient gets the correct examination. Maximize the distance between the patient and the source. Establish a good routine procedure and make sure to follow them strictly and eliminate out of field artifacts while making sure to have the area of interest ISO centered. In discussing distance, any ancillary person who needs to be in the room during the exam needs to be at the maximum distance from the scanner while wearing a wraparound apron. And finally, when talking about shielding, Gonadal shielding should be employed when the reproductive organs are within four to five centimeters of the beam, as long as there is no interference with the study. This is important, especially in children and reproductive age adults. Flat and shaped contact shields are appropriate to use. There are many sources of radiation and computed tomography accounts for about 24% of all sources of exposure. According to the NCRP, it is estimated that the average annual dose from CT is about 147 millirems or 1.47 millisieverts. So let's talk about protecting ourselves. We know technologists should not be in the room during a scan, but if absolutely necessary, they should use the same principles of time, distance, and shielding. The control booth should have lead shielding, dose badges should be worn and monitored routinely. Technologists who are required to routinely wear protective aprons are exposed to significant non-uniform radiation fields and doses. When we use a lead apron, one dosimeter cannot monitor doses both at the protected trunk of our bodies and at the unprotected head and neck areas. Using two dosimeters provides a more accurate estimation of the effective dose, one for the whole body and one at the collar level for the lose to the lens of the eyes. The waist dosimeter should be worn inside the apron at the waist, while the second badge should be worn on the outside of the collar. So how do we handle technologists who are pregnant? We know that the individual dosimeters that female workers wear in the radiology department may overestimate the fetal dose by a factor of 10 or more. When the dosimeter is worn outside of the lead apron, the measured dose may be even 100 times higher than the actual fetal dose. It is very improbable the fetal doses would exceed 25% of the dose reading on the individual badge. That is why a second fetal dose monitor should be provided. Sometimes at the request of the technologist, the occupational physician may request a change of job for the technologist without actually having to give a reason for that decision. The employer may also decide to initiate the change in job duties in order to prevent future problems with the child when born. Remember though, this approach is not required from the point of view of radiation protection. It is not necessary to move a pregnant technologist outside of a diagnostic radiology position. Because cells are still rapidly dividing in children as they grow, 
Children are at the highest risk of radiation damage. Radiation protection is an integral part of the pediatric CT procedure because we can't forget that the cumulative effect over a lifetime of exposure may increase their lifetime risk of cancer. So what strategies and recommendations to lower the radiation dose in pediatric patients should we know? Have all requests screened by the radiologist, tailor the study to the diagnostic needs of the child, to prevent motion artifacts immobilized for patient safety. And if you, can if you can spare optimum spatial and contrast resolution, use the low dose techniques. When scanning the axial brain, tilt the gantry 20 degrees cephalad and try to expo avoid exposure to the lens of the eyes. The use of lead shielding over the recent years has become almost obsolete due to the following factors. The amount of radiation exposure that the gonads receive during routine diagnostic imaging is well below the threshold that would adversely affect fertility. This is true for direct exposure, such as a pelvic radiograph, or indirect exposure, such as scatter radiation from imaging a different body part. The amount of radiation that a patient is exposed to is determined by the x-ray machine based on the patient's size. If a lead shield is detected by the x-ray machine, this may lead to increased radiation exposure to the patient as the machine attempts to image through the shield. Shielding can obscure the imaging field, leading to an unusable x-ray or CT scan, which may lead to an incompetent interpretation, or it may lead to repeat imaging and increased radiation exposure. Please consult your radiologist and department policies for any updates on pediatric shielding. Pediatric scanning requires even deeper concern for radiation and protection. It is important to remember that the dose to the patient increases with the square of the kilovoltage. So for example, reducing from 120 to 100 kVp can redu reduce the dose by 35%. Also, switching from 2.5 millimeter slices to 1.25 millimeter slices will increase the dose by about 25% since it will require more images over the same area. Again, reducing the millimeter of slices increases the patient dose. The field of view is adapted to the child's size or morphology. But remember that using a field of view of 25 centimeters can deliver a dose five to 10% higher than using a field of view of 50 centimeters. MA values should also be adapted to the body size, both weight and diameter. And by increasing the pitch from one to two, you can divide the dose in half. And finally, the tube rotation should be adapted to the required acquisition rate. We need to remember that the optimization of each acquisition protocol is considered important to reduce the patient dose and to keep a good image quality. For example, when looking at these images, the fact that reducing factors of 120 kVp and 105 MAS to 100 kVp and 80 MAS still gives us a good quality image with a reduction in patient dose. 
This goes along with the Alara principle of keeping the dose as reasonably achievable. It is important to note that optimization does not mean under exposure. The acquisition constants should not be underestimated for an image of insufficient image quality. We have talked about a lot of material in this module. So let's try and synthesize all this information. We know that protocol adaptations can only address certain parameters. So let's try to review. The dose increases with the square of the kilovoltage. The possible adjustments are very limited and there is no study which demonstrates the influence of voltage reduction on image quality in pediatric CT scanning. We know that the rate of the dose increases linearly with MAS. An excessive increase in MAS does not result in image overexposure in CT as it does in conventional radiology. So the excess MAS in a protocol would be completely unnoticed. And when above a, a certain threshold, when we increase MAS, the signal to noise ratio is not improved. It is necessary for each anatomical region being scanned to use the optimal compromise between decreasing MAS and retaining significant signal to noise ratio. The thinner the slice, the lower the signal to noise ratio requiring increasing the MAS. The dose is cut in half when the pitch doubles. The use of a higher pitch also enables a reduction in acquisition time and hence motion artifacts. And the radiologist should be able to adapt protocols on a case-by-case -case basis if necessary. So as we summarize, we know that exposure parameters discussed are what characterizes the conditions of image acquisition. These quantities will vary according to the morphology or patient size and shape and the image quality that is required. When we talk about dose to the entry, where dose is absorbed in the air, which includes the radiation released at the point of intersection of the axis of the x-ray beam to the skin at the entrance of the patient. We express this in milligrays. Also expressed in milligrays is the absorbed dose to an organ. These doses correspond to a certain amount of energy that is administered locally in the tissues. The equivalent dose expressed in millisieverts is known as the effective dose, or E. While these quantities are not measurable, they make it possible to quantify the effects of radiation exposure. We calculate them from the weights of each organ. This is still one of the best ways to estimate the long-term risks of radiation exposure. And finally, remember that there is a direct correlation between the exposure parameters and the dose delivered to the patient. The physical parameters of exposure are KVP or voltage across the tube, MA or the current through the x-ray tube, exposure time in seconds, and the load or MAS. The geometric parameters are the focal spot detector, focal spot to the patient distances, and the size of the beam. So this concludes section two. So please enjoy the rest of your evening or day and thank you again for joining us.